Well, I'm making progress. Um, not necessarily uh, what I was hoping for, but I'm still making progress. Um, trying to figure out my nutrition to go along with my workout plans to gain muscle mass. Um, but one of the things that has been working for me and an improvement for me is that I have been gaining strength. Um, so one of the really key concepts in whether it's your fitness goals, gaining weight, um, is essentially uh, what's called progressive overload. Um, really what this means is we're going to push our body into situations that it's not used to and it will respond accordingly. So um, whether that is, you know, losing weight and making more intense uh, on your, uh, you know, cardio and what you're doing there. Um, but basically progressive overload is kind of one or a combination of a few different things. Um, so one thing that you're able to do to overload is to be able to increase your intensity. So adjusting your intensity, um, maybe that is reducing the amount of rest uh, between, uh, between sets, being able to really push yourself hard with less rest. And so now your body has to deal with that. Uh, another way to be able to uh, progressively overload is basically increasing your time under tension. Um, and this is really the length of time that you're doing things. So this could be I'm going to actually do more sets that I'm going to do. I'm going to go for longer on the treadmill or longer walks or uh, longer runs. So really kind of increasing the time in which you are doing things. What's very difficult to do is being able to increase both intensity and your length of time. Because if you're increasing your intensity, then you're not gonna have the energy and the capability to actually basically push yourself to do longer times because you're spending it all in your, your intensity, right? So think about it as, as if I'm sprinting, can I sprint for 3K? No, I can't, right? Because my body just won't be able to handle it. Um, but a third one that you're able to do for being able to deal with progressive overload is increasing your weight, right? So maybe I went from five pound dumbbells to 10 pound dumbbells, um, you know, or, or upping different weight that I have across my different exercises that I'm doing. So for me, what I have been doing is I have increased both my time under tension and been progressively adding more weight as well. So it's been interesting to see because I started up after the 250K challenge with um, trying a new workout, right? Which was going to be essentially uh, 20 reps, 10 reps, 10 reps, and then 15 reps. Oh, my five looks wonderful there. Um, so essentially going from three sets and going to four sets. So it's going to be definitely being able to increase the amount of time that I'm spending doing that, but also changing up before I was kind of trying hitting like 10, 12 reps each, but now it's kind of a recruitment set, push as hard as you can across these. And if you push really hard, then that 15 is the same weight that he did at 20 and it is hard as hell to move. Um, so I've really increased my time under tension for my exercises. And what I have been finding in doing that with the same weights that I was doing before is that I had been feeling stronger. So my body had been adapting and I had actually been feeling stronger, even though I haven't really been seeing that much difference in gain in muscle mass and weight. Um, I've seen a few different physical changes in my body. I know my arms are getting bigger because they're actually filling out some of the shirts that I, I wear now. Um, but it's been interesting that I felt stronger so that I've been actually upping the weight on those as well. So I've been keeping the same, uh, same sets that I've been doing for my new time, but it's allowed me to increase the weight. So that'd be, you know, adding, a, you know, five pounds to, you know, a dumbbell, uh, 10 pounds here, 20 pounds there. But what happens is, is that really adds up as you're doing lots of time. So 
for example, um, you know, my, my deadlifts have been coming along. So I've, I've increased, I think the amount that I'm doing on deadlifts for reps by about 60 pounds. So when I total all of the increases that I've been doing compared to three weeks ago, I'm lifting in a single workout about 2,200 pounds more than what I was before. And that's because now it's, you know, five pounds and, and five pounds more at 10 reps, right? Is 50 pounds more that your body has lifted in that same time period. So when they all add up and you keep adding more and more weight onto each of the different exercises that you're doing, at the end of the day, you do the totals and you start to see, well, oh, geez, I'm, you know, doing 2,000 pounds more during the same time with the same intensity that I was doing before, but I've been able to increase these two different ones. So I know my body is adapting because I am getting stronger and I'm being able to do more weight on my exercises. So I'm able to push through it. So now, you know, what I'm trying to tweak with and I've been playing around with my calories is making sure and that, you know, and that's been helping because it's been giving me the energy to be able to lift the more weight. So now it's just trying to play with the right numbers to get to a point of where my body will actually see that growth. Um, so it's getting stronger, which means it is growing in a sense, but I need to kind of feed it the right things to be able to kind of push it past that next little bit to be able to recruit and build where this new weight seems normal and then continually to progressively overload to do more. So it's a very interesting uh, concept, kind of something that you would, you know, uh, kind of instinctually know that, that you should be adding more and more what you're doing. But it's, it's been interesting to see the effect that it's been having for myself, being able to do more in an individual workout. Um, now the next part is really just the, the nutrition to make sure that I can get my body to grow the right way that I want it to. So wanted to just kind of check in, uh, give you a bit of a heads up of what's been working for me. Um, and been trying to get to that next little bit and the progressive overload has been something, a tool that I've been using. Again, I'm a nerd. Um, so I have been tracking all this stuff in spreadsheets. I <laughs> showing my sister when she's down, uh, and my anal spreadsheets on how I'm able to keep track of all these different numbers and, and seeing what it goes. But for me, it's really not about the number that I'm hitting. It's about being able to see progression, being able to see some kind of forward movement in the direction that I want to go, or if I'm staying level or if I'm kind of falling behind in some area, just gives me indicators of things that I can try to adjust and see how it affects over the next couple of weeks. So that's progressive overload. Um, again, if you're getting back into, you know, exercise, don't try to push yourself too hard do very small progressive overloads. So adding a few more minutes, you know, maybe one more rep or, uh, uh, you know, just pick up the pace a little bit on, on the walk that you're going through. Because you want to be able to do your progression at a point of where you don't risk injury or any kind of ill effects to your health. So you want to try to do it in a very controlled manner and don't push too hard. Um, cause sometimes too, you'll feel sore afterwards and it might set you back, not wanting to go back and do the exercise again. So small little increments, uh, like everybody says, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and you'll progressively see those changes as you keep on going.